I designed one simple tool that allows me to engrave 20 pencils in less than four minutes. And that isn't the best part about this because I also did these pencils with just one mouse click and no other input from me. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create one of these yourself and use software you already have and save yourself a ton of money in the process. So let's get at it. Now, if you've done a bunch of repetitive laser engraving work like business cards or keychains, or God forbid you're making a lot of coasters, then this video might be for you because I, I had a job that I had to do and I got tired of trying to build these static jigs, especially with a Galvo where the workspace is, is typically smaller. So I wanted to use a rotary table and they exist. You can buy them. And I found this one from, from Cloud Ray, which looked fantastic, but, but holy engraving Batman, this thing is expensive. It's close to $500. And I looked at it and went, well, fundamentally it's a stepper motor with a disc on top of it. How hard can this be? So I started to design one of these myself. I finished the job I was doing, but I didn't just want to make something that was perfect purpose specific for that job. I wanted to make something that was flexible and I created a, a, a basically a template where I could in effect design a, a, a jig for anything that I ever want to engrave that's repetitive. And this video is the product of that work. It, it will basically show you how you can do this yourself. And instead of paying $500, you can build one of these for about 50 bucks. And that to me is is pretty uh, significant economics already, but it also saves you a ton of time when you're doing the engraving, especially with a Galvo. And with that, let's get going and I'll show you what I designed. I won't go into deep detail here on how I designed this, but I will show you an assembly for the base plate. The base plate is the main drive of this. It's basically a round table with three pins sticking up and those pins are designed for positive placement of any jig plate that you have. And this is all attached to a flange, which mounts directly on top of the stepper motor. So direct drive, really easy to implement and understand. I also created a jig template file, which you can clone to create your own jigs, drop your design on and rotate it around the center of the, uh, of the, the jig. And uh, you can create your own fairly quickly. Uh, I use this, in fact, to create this jig of for round coasters. I just dropped a circle on there, a 100 millimeter circle, and managed to get four of them on the outside. And I can, I can make four coasters, four round coasters. Now, all of these files are going to be available as SVGs on the member site, and you can download them there for free if you're a member. If you're not a member, consider joining. But if you don't want to join, uh, just leave a comment down below. And if there's enough interest, maybe I'll create a nominal fee download on Etsy for this. When you want to cut these out, you can use a diode laser or a CO2 laser. I use the CO2 laser for those for the round coaster uh, jig because it's acrylic. I like acrylic because it's flat, but uh, a diode laser will work just fine here. And uh, I'll go into more detail about how to actually create a jig. I'll show you how I created the pencil jig that I showed at the beginning of this video. And you can see how, e how easy it will be and, and how I created that. Assembly is pretty easy. I, I, the box all just kind of fits together. You can't really put it together the wrong way. So you put the three sides on and then squeeze the top on and that fits onto the base. You can glue all this up with either CA uh, super glue or, or I used uh, wood glue to do it. And uh, once you get it put together, you can then take a stepper motor and slide it in there. It'll be a tight fit if you have a tall uh, NEMA 17 stepper motor. Put the screws in. These are M3, uh, M3 by 10 screws or M3 by 12 screws. Then you assemble the actual plate. And you can see I've already got the flange bolted in there. Those are M3 by 16 screws with nuts on the back. And then I'm using these 5 16 8 millimeter pins and I'm just gluing them in. Uh, wipe off the excess glue and to make sure they go in there straight I'm actually taking the jig I made for for round coasters and just kind of putting it in at the top that just holds everything tight the pins should be pretty tight to start with but I, I figured this would make sure that everything is good and that's all there is to the assembly I put the base plate on you can see it's it's screwed on to the to the stepper motor with the flange and uh, you see the stepper motor I got my cable plugged in in this case for the Omni 1 
and uh, pretty much ready to go. Now, when I want to put a jig on, you'll see jigs all have a, a line engraved across them, and one, and the line runs through a single hole. Match that up with the line that runs through the through the the pin on the on the base plate, and that gets the orientation proper. It shouldn't really matter, but just in case it does, you might have something where where it would matter. This just makes sure that everything is always the same. Now I mentioned that you could create your own custom jigs and I showed you those pencils at the beginning. Well, here's how I created that jig. So first of all, I cloned the, the template jig that I have and I'm just gonna put a rectangle here from the outside edge in towards the center. That's the width of a pencil. Now the whole pencil won't fit on here. It's okay if it hangs off because we have enough of the pencil there to, to balance it. And the pencil is roughly eight millimeters wide, and I'll center it on that center line. Now I'm just going to copy that that rectangle I created, and I'm going to create a circular pattern, and uh, center it on the actual center of my of my jig, and rotate it. And in this case, I want 20 pencils. That should be good enough. So you can see it here. If I zoom out a bit, uh, you'll see that I have something like that, and when I actually turn this into a 3D shape, you'll see it here, and that's what we're going to get when it when we get it. And I'm just going to throw it over to the laser here, and you can see it cutting out. I won't show you too much, but uh, but that's the jig. And now we're ready to drop that onto onto the table and do the pencils. And I'll show you that next. So the rotary table's built. It's ready to go, and it's plugged into the in this case my Omni One. It's powered on. And all I need to do now is prepare to do a job for all those pencils I have. So I'm gonna go into Lightburn and I'm gonna select the string that I want. I'm gonna center it in the workspace because I know where the center is gonna be on the jig. Now I'm gonna to go to this repeat marking option and you probably haven't looked at this if you don't have a rotary table. So I'm gonna go set it up and even though my, my motor's plugged into the rotary setting on my laser, it's actually going to rotate vertical on the vertical. So uh, I'm going to pick the, the motor here. It's, it's motor one and it's going to be rotating. You can also do linear if you want to do a slide of some sort. You pick the number of steps per revolution. Now this calibration only has to be done once, so you don't have to remember any of this, but uh, you pick all that. You can do a test and it will do exactly one, what it thinks is one rotation. So that'll tell you whether your steps are correct. Once we have that, then I can go back to the, the regular repeat marking option here. And you see the count is currently set to 10. I'm gonna change that to 20 and hit calculate. And what it's telling me there in the calculation is every time it does a step, it's gonna rotate 18 degrees. At this point, as long as I don't hit that calculate again, I can pick any number I want. So if I just wanna do one pencil, I can do it. it doesn't make sense on a rotary, but uh, I might wanna do uh, more. And maybe I wanna do five, for example. But in this case, I'm actually gonna do 20. So I'm gonna change the count to 20. That will be one full revolution. And now I need to make sure that the rotary is aligned here. So I'm gonna hit the framing button and I'm gonna lay a pencil in there on the very first spot, which is that, that horizontal line across the, the jig. And I'm just gonna slide a card in there. In the case of an Omni One, the, the framing is actually done with the UV laser, so you gotta put a card there. And then I can just move the base of the, of the table around to make sure that it's right, uh, that the engraving is gonna be perfect on the pencil. At this point, that all I really need to do is load up the the jig with 20 pencils and push the start button and I as long as I don't move the the rotary table so you might want to tape it down it will engrave 20 pencils and I'll show you the job here quickly the last couple anyway and in real time here you can see that the laser is very concise and stepping between pencils is deadly accurate so as a result I got 20 pencils that are exactly the same and they all look remarkable uh, all for for the price of a handful of plywood a, a stepper motor and a flange and i will put affiliate links to the flange and stepper motor that i use down below and if you don't have one uh, feel free to use those links now keep in mind that this is uh, Fifty dollars worth of worth of material here to to save you four or five hundred dollars, and you get effectively exactly the same result that you would get with one of those expensive rotary tables. 
And it's perfect if you have a small footprint laser like a Galvo or, or maybe a, a nano, a longer nano or something. Uh, you can use this type of mechanism for that and get what amounts to a massive workspace where you can hold 20 pencils, but it doesn't take a whole lot more space than your current laser. Now, I will put a, a video up in the corner here. If you want to continue watching, go watch that and I'll see you over there. And I'll quickly wind down here and say get out there, make your world, and I'll see you next time.